In this video cheat sheet, we're going to enable OSPF v3 on an IPv6 network. We're going to start off with the baseline show command of show IPv6 OSPF neighbor to see if uh, there is already some OSPF v3 neighbor adjacencies on the router. And then we're going to execute the debug IPv6 OSPF events command so that we can watch how things unfold when we enable OSPF v3 on our IPv6 network. And then we're going to finish up with some verification with a verification command of show IPv6 OSPF neighbor. Let's look at the network topology. I wanted to show this real quick to show you that on these links right here or to remind you just in case or to to tell you just in case you did not go through the IPv6 addressing and basic connectivity video cheat sheets that these links that we're going to be enabling OSPF v3 on these three right here have globally routable global unique IPv6 addresses where the link between router 2 and router 3 does not we just enabled IPv6 on the interface on router 2 in the video cheat sheet but it's also just enabled on router 3 and we did that with the IPv6 enable command underneath the interface so I just wanted to point that out to you again OSPF v3 should come up just fine even though there's not a globally unique address it's going to use the link local address to communicate between the two routers so we're basically we're going to be creating OSPF area 0 between routers 2 router 3 2 and 4 and then OSPF area 2 between routers 2 and 1 so let's start with our show IPv6 OSPF neighbor command and of course we don't have anything but you always have to you always have to create a baseline you always have to know what it is you're getting into and now I'm going to execute the debug IPv6 OSPF events command so that we can see how things unfold as we enable OSPF on these interfaces so the way that you enable OSPF on an IPv6 network is exclusively under the interfaces with OSPF version 2 you can do it on the interface with the newer rev levels of code or you can do it the more traditional way underneath the OSPF process ID with the network statement you do not do the network statement in OSPF version 3 you do everything underneath the interface uh, for example underneath interface loopback 0 we want to route that IPv6 prefix so you execute the command IPv6 OSPF the process ID on router 2 which is 2 and then the area that you want associated with that interface in this case area 0 here's the interface that is just enabled with IPv6 so IPv6 enabled that's all we did this is the interface so keep an eye on that and we're gonna put that in area 0 going to put this interface in area 0 which is the interface that goes over to router 4 and then the, the interface that goes over to router 1 we're going to put in area 2 so let's go ahead and do that once again you do that with the IPv6 OSPF the process ID for that router and then the area that you want to put that interface in and we're starting to get some uh, actually we get a lot of information from our debug command so obviously we know that it works we're, we're seeing a lot of, of DR BDR elections because all these are broadcast networks so I'm gonna go ahead and kill the debug because as we can tell there's a lot of stuff going on so let's do a show IPv6 OSPF neighbor to see if we have any neighbor adjacencies yet and we do we have our neighbor, our neighbor to four and our neighbor to one and then we also have our neighbor to full to router three which once again remember all we did was enable IPv6 on that interface we did not actually put a global address on that interface and it worked just fine OSPF came up just fine because it used the link local address to used uh, to route via OSPF it used the, the the link local address and as you can see we have all kinds of routes now there's router ones loop back router twos router three router four router five you get the idea tons of routes from all over our network so that is how you enable OSPF v3 on an IPv6 network